Check out my Context for Kids Bible Curriculum books. I have volumes on honor and shame, biblical covenants, ancient social relations, image bearing, idolatry, and the new creation starting at ages 7 and up, all the way to books for late teens and adults. Each book contains 50 lessons on major Bible context topics. At Context for Kids, I take grown-up scholarly material and I slow it down. I never dumb it down. Available at Amazon.com. Hi, I'm Ms. Tyler, and welcome to this episode of Context for Kids. This week, we're going to be continuing our series of the woes of Matthew chapter 23, the woes to you, scribes and Pharisees. And so far, we've done quite a few teachings, and I've enjoyed them. I've hoped you've enjoyed them. This week, we're going to have an episode called, But oh, We're Such Awesome Tithers! Where Yeshua, or your family might call him Jesus, and I want you to call him whatever your family calls him, because, you know, we're still talking about our Savior, who died on the cross, was dead, he's buried, he resurrected from the dead. He's still our Savior, okay, no matter what your family calls him. Anyway, so this week we're going to be talking about his next rebuke, which wasn't a rebuke about the way they were tithing. Actually, the way they were tithing was exemplary, awesome, amazing, as we're going to see, but they were missing the big picture in another way. So without further ado, let's get to it. I'm going to put the verses up on the, uh, on the screen for you, starting in Matthew 23, 23. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you tithe mint and dill and cumin, and have neglected the weightier matters of the law. Justice and mercy and faithfulness, these you ought to have done without neglecting the others. You blind guides, straining out a gnat and swallowing a camel. Ooh, camels don't actually sound very appetizing. <laughs> anyway, um, so, are they right or are they wrong or a little bit of both? Well, like all of us about things are a little bit of both. Um, like everyone, the scribes and Pharisees had a lot right and a lot wrong. They were awesome tithers, which, meant, which means that they followed the Bible commandments to first give 10% of their crops to the Levites who were, uh, and, and the Levites were the priests, some of the Levites were priests, and some of the Levites were just temple servants. Things had changed by the first century, um, but they were still priests. And the second 10% of their harvest in some years to celebrate the fall feast of Sukkot, and in other years, that second 10% went to um, provide food for the poor. Now, if you want to learn more about the three biblical tithes, you can check out my teaching on Torah portion Kitavo. It's on my YouTube channel, and I will add a link in the description. Now, but tithing wasn't just about following a commandment, even as overboard as they went with it. Commandments aren't about checking off boxes to be in good standing with God. Now, I gotta tell you something. They were only required to, to tithe their main, main crops, okay? But these guys were going above and beyond. They were tithing herbs. They were tithing things that were considered to be wild, things the Bible never even talked about. So in that, that was really awesome. They were making sure that everything they grew was tithed. And, and they were not criticized for that. But God's commandments, I mean, what are the commandments about, right? God's commandments are there to teach us how to love God and one another, and most importantly, as far as loving one another, not to oppress one another. The tithe was there, one, to care for others. The Levites and the priests had no land inheritance of their own, and they needed to be supported by all the other tribes of Israel. Also, if someone's family fell on hard times, they needed food. 
to, to get through, okay? And two, this is the other reason the tithe was there for, they were to use the bounty that God gave them to celebrate the festival of Sukkot in the fall in style. And also to make sure that the poor could celebrate as well. It was a good deed, a mitzvot, to invite the poor to your Sukkot feast. But, you know, these guys were tithing on steroids. Okay, they weren't really tithing steroids. They didn't have steroids, okay? But the Bible didn't say anything about tithing herbs and stuff just being crops. The Pharisees were insisting on tithing just about everything they grew. And that's not wrong. That's great. Yeshua never rebuked them for that. In fact, he never rebukes anyone for going overboard on their own personal interpretation of the commandments and keeping, you know, keeping the commandments above and beyond. Um, but the only thing that he did criticize them for was interpreting commandments and keeping the commandments in ways that oppressed others. Okay? That's an important distinction. One of these days we'll talk about tra what traditions of men were and what traditions of men weren't because not all of them were bad. And Yeshua actually kept some of the traditions of men like uh, doing the blessing over the bread before eating and and just different things. Not all traditions are bad. Anyway, so what was the problem then? They're tithing like gangbusters. Well, the problem wasn't with their tithing. It was what their hearts were set on. They weren't focused on what the poor needed, on getting justice for them, making sure that they were cared for. They were tithing in order to satisfy a rule not out of love for others. Now, God gave the tithe to Israel as a way to love one another because the Levites and the uh, Levitical priests, they had no land of their own because they were supposed to devote themselves fully towards serving God and serving the people. They would minister to God, but part of that was ministering to people. They couldn't do that full time while growing crops and, you know, all the stuff that everyone else had to do. There was just no way. They had to be at God's full disposal, at the people's full disposal, okay? Now, but the Pharisees were treating this as like a little box to check off on their path to, you know, righteousness or... <laughs> Self-righteousness is what it comes down to when we're treating commandments like little boxes to check off so that we can be better than everyone else or more Torah observant or more or more or more. We keep the commandments because we love God because he has saved us. And so we do things his way. Because Yeshua said the greatest commandments were love God, love your neighbor, and all the other commandments hang on those two commandments. So all the other commandments teach us how to do those two things. So what does this teach us? Well, it teach us that it isn't enough to keep the commandments or even keep them above and beyond. You know, if our goal is uh, just to win God's favor or to put him in our debt or to think that, well, I've been doing these things, so he owes me. We need to want to be we need to want to be <laughs> many versions of our God. Image bearers walking around on the earth. That's exactly what our Messiah is. God's perfect image bearer. We should do the commandments in order to show others what he looks like. Not so that we can fool ourselves into thinking we're better than everyone else. No! If we were better than everyone else, we wouldn't need commandments to tell us what to do, right? Ugh, excuse me. Lots of allergens. Now, we will never be perfect. But that's okay. It's okay. What's important is that we never stop trying to be more and more like God in showing his love to the world. And of course, that love of God was perfectly imaged in Yeshua, Jesus. 
Now, if you want more information, check out episode 16, The Woes, part 5, Dill, Mint, Human, Righteousness and Justice on my character in context podcast channel available on my YouTube channel, Tyler Don Rosenquist, or my podcast channel, characterincontext.podbean.com. As always, I love you. I'm praying for you. Thank you for joining me this week. And you know what? I'm praying for you and your family. And I hope you have a wonderful week studying the scripture together as a family and learning more and more about our Savior, Yeshua the Messiah. Bye-bye now.